Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Help Heal Veterans Presents Virtual Crafter Studio. Thank you for spending some time with us today. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few items so that you know how to participate in today's event. You should see a toolbar on your computer with some icons for the event. You have joined the presentation using your computer speakers for sound by default. If you would prefer to join over the telephone, just select telephone in the audio settings and dial in information will be displayed and it is also in the chat box. Just to make sure that everyone is hearing me clearly, I am going to launch a poll. Please let me know how the sound is. Please note your microphone and camera will be displayed during the event unless the moderator gives you the opportunity to ask questions live. I have disabled the chat for today's webinar, but if you have a question for our team, please use the raise your hand icon to ask a question live or to open the Q&A at the bottom of your screen and type in your question. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will do our best to get to them. Also, we are recording this session and we'll make it available within the next few days if you would like to watch it again or share it with your friends and family. We will send it to everyone with an email and the link to put it onto our website. I'd like to introduce some of our presenters. First, we have two of our craft care specialists out of our Maywood, Illinois community-based craft clinic. We have Mia. Mia has been with Healvet since 1999 and has presented at the past two of the previous virtual crafting events. And out of our Fresno, California community-based craft clinic and our last virtual crafting event, please welcome Heather. Heather has been with Healvet since 2002. And since you are all here for the crafting, let's turn it over to Mia to kick off the Crafter Studio. Hello, fellow crafters, and welcome to our virtual crafters workshop to learn some techniques to paint and design your paint by number, which by now you probably have all received. I am co-presenting with Heather, so she will be chiming in pretty often. And uh, we will start first with the uh, basic kit, which a uh, Paint my a paint by number. I'm sure you've all done when you were, you know, younger. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, each of your colors. I had to mark the top because they weren't marked. They only had it on the rim. You just take that color and find the space and fill it in, and that's pretty obvious and straightforward. Now your paint by number will come out really nicely that way, but we kind of want to show you different ways where it'll look a lot, it's a lot less restrictive and it'll look more individualized with your own taste and colors and techniques. We're gonna explore impressionism, a little expressionism and modernist techniques as we go along. Um, by now you would have received one of these four, um, the parrot. This is um, a little turtle. Sorry if it's not centered perfectly. We have a nice little eagle here in flight or this puppy dog. Now, all of these things that Heather and I are gonna talk about, you know, you can work with on any of these. Um, we just figured you could start it now or you could just do a practice and start it later. This is one that's done right here. Um, it's more straightforward. Uh, she just followed the outline of the actual numbers, you know, on the box on the back where the label is. And uh, this is how it turned out. So as you can see, it's super nice. However, um, I chose the parrot. The reason I chose the parrot, I like the bold colors. I thought that the design was kind of direct so you could do bigger colors in the sky area and in, in the feathers and different areas of it. I thought it'd be easier to show you some ideas. So that's why I, I tried that. I'm going to start with like an obvious area where you pick, you know, a color. So I'm going to do a white cloud. I got my number one. Now, one of the tips we like to do is we like to use these little toothpicks for mixing or you can also use a stir stick or anything small. And we dip a little bit into the water and stir and put a little couple drops in there because you want to extend it and uh, make it kind of creamy and smooth. 
so the application will be nicer. Now, sometimes the number's gonna show through, but don't worry about it. You can always go over it later on. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead. Now I am using the brush it came with. It looks like this. I'm gonna have different brushes and of course you're welcome to do that. And as we continue, Heather's gonna show you and talk to you about some ideas too of other ways to paint without just the obvious paintbrush. So let's start with right here with a cloud. I'm just gonna pick a nice cloud right here and show you, you just fill it in. I hit a little blue under there. And as you can see, it won't really matter that much. If you do go over the line, they're pretty faint and nobody's gonna know if you went into a leaf or not. You can just keep going and paint over that. This is not about perfection. This is about just having some fun, putting some color down. And then obviously a lot of them are two colors. So you just put 50%, let's say for the sky, I, I dipped some, a couple drops of white, a couple drops of blue. I have a palette to the left of me. I can't show you every last thing. And I'm mixing those two colors together. And as you see, as I put it on the, the little um, painter's board, it'll just be a medium blue. And you can use that lighter blue that comes in the kit, depending on what kit you get. You can make depth. You can even, you know, use a warm um, color, like a, a red and blend it so it looks like a sunset. You can really have a lot of fun with these colors. So that's, that's the simple way. Um, but we were wondering, in, other than like changing your water out and uh, keeping your water clear and trying to just not muddy up your colors too much and have plenty of, um, you know, little paper towels and things to clean up. I, we wondered if you had any questions um, or comments about that first part. And I think Rose had a couple of tips she wanted to add to about mixing in the beginning. Rose? Yes, I do have a tip. Um, I did the turtle paint by number and I found it that almost every color in that one had to be mixed. So what I did was I would take one color, like my number one color, and then just mix that, all the, all the little spaces that said one over whatever, one over five, one over six, one over seven, I mixed all the colors that were partially one on a palette. And then I filled all those spaces in. So you're only dealing with, you're mixing a lot of colors, but you're also only dealing with like number one at a time. So it kind of simplifies the process a little bit. So I hope that helps. Thanks Rose, that sounds great. Um, if anybody doesn't have any questions, I'm gonna talk, um, Heather's gonna talk to us a little bit about some tips and various supplies you might need. Some people that um, might benefit you if you have uh, fine motor skill issues, um, either arthritis or any kind of issue like that with your hands or you're visually challenged. Uh, so Heather's going to talk to us now about that. Thank you, uh, Mia. And um, so first I'm going to go over some of these uh, techniques you can use to make it easier to hold your paintbrush. So this is the brush that came with it. Um, the real simple one I found, if you have difficulty with ripping the small paint brushes is to take a foam ball um, and of course you want the foam ball that would be the good size to fit your hand. Um, I found this foam ball it came in a pack at like the Dollar Tree. Um, of course Walmart or any crafting store carries foam balls and then basically you just shove the paint brush through the foam ball and then you hold the foam ball when you paint. So you don't have to have the fine motor skill to hold the paintbrush real close. Uh, if you don't have a foam ball, the other option you can do is you can take a rag, um, washcloth, this is an old piece of a t-shirt, and you just fold it up depending on how wide you want it. And then I'm going to fold this one more because the handle on this smaller and then you just take it and you roll the shirt over the paintbrush 
like so. And then take a rubber band, or you can use tape. You don't have a rubber band. And you just wrap it around. The rubber band does hold it a little snugger than the tape might come loose. And But same idea as the foam ball, just makes it easier to hold it when you paint. Um, some other techniques, uh, some other things that might come in handy is a pair of these. These are, head. it's a head visor magnifier. And I'm gonna show you it has multiple magnifications. So depending on your vision and how small the area is, it folds up. It's got a little drop down here. Um, you wear it on your head, it's got a headband. This way you don't have to worry about holding the magnifying glass with one hand and trying to paint with the other. So those are pretty handy. Um, another little thing that could come in handy, and I made this out of the package that the paint by number came in. And now keep in mind, if you do make this little thing to hold your paint, uh, you can't see the picture anymore. So you may want to take a picture of the picture if you want to use it as a reference, how it looks. Um, so basically I just cut it out so that there were equal parts on each side and folded it over and taped it up to make a little box. Um, if you're really crap handy with power tools, uh, this is the one that was made um, and you make it using, um, I think they're called boring bits. And so it depends on the type of uh, paint that you have. So you make it to fit whatever these little con containers are, however big they are. And uh, like Mia mentioned, I numbered my paint so I know which one's which to match it to the paint by number. Um, you can see that. Um, other tips is if you uh, whoops, have a paintbrush and the ones that came with the kit have nice um, points on them, but some of these is a little big. So if you had another paintbrush and you wanted to cut it down, you can use a pair of scissors and trim the bristles with the scissors to make it the right, you know, to add more of a point. You can even cut it a little bit at the base if it's a really fat paintbrush and you want it skinnier. Um, or if you get paint stuck in the bristles, you can also trim them off a little bit so that they're not causing marks on your paper that you don't want. And uh, uh, Mia did mention the toothpick was very handy to stir things with. Um, uh, you can always use a tin can for your water if you don't want to worry about messing up your cups. Depending on your situation, usually you can find an old cup, but make sure if you use a tin can that you take a pair of pliers and squish down any little metal pieces that are sticking out from when you took the lid off. Because uh, it'll surprise you and you just run into it and it'll cut you. Uh, so, oh, and the, for mixing paint, um, you can use wax paper is really handy. Uh, wax paper doesn't, the paint won't absorb into it as easily as using like a paper plate. Uh, if you use a paper plate that has a slick surface, it'll work just okay. But some paper plates really absorb liquid and don't work as well. Uh, you can also buy these little painter palettes to mix your paints in, uh, which can come in handy as well. And once again, I think I found these at the Dollar Tree, uh, but any crafting store, Walmart, anything like that, they sell different types of painting palettes. So I think those are most of the tips we have. So to demonstrate how to use this nice little brush with a foam ball on it, um, I'm gonna paint the flower right up here. And if you did get this one, um, it's the yellow flower. So I'm gonna use the number three there. And you can just go in and fill in the surface. Like so. And so you can see it still makes it easy enough that you can paint with it. Um, those are the tips I have for right now, Mia. Did you okay. have something else you were going to talk about? Um, I forgot to add earlier, um, this little instruction sheet comes with it. So if you paint over one of the areas, you can always go back because sometimes the number that you're supposed to paint is on the outside and it's covered up. So I forgot to mention that in the beginning. 
and just wanted to uh, add that. Um, I guess, thank you, Heather, and I'll go on to uh, talking a little bit about Impressionism. I know you all know what Impressionism is and how Claude Monet and his other Paris-based buddies um, started this um, cool new way of painting in the 1860s. So the gist of it really was to get their, themselves out of the studio and you go out and they, open, they, they paint in plain air out in the fields, out seeing the light. And it was to really uh, capture the transient effects of light and the change and uh, how light changes. So they could do that in a, with quicker brush, brush strokes um, within a more immediate um, you know, look and fresh look and gestural look to their work. And, um, and it was done rapidly. So sometimes they would do many canvases during the day to, as the light change. So to apply this to our, our um, nice little parrot here, um, you just grab your brush and you can kind of forget about the lines here. The outline is great because I, you know, nobody knows how to draw a parrot quite, I don't think that quickly and well. You just go ahead and dip your, you know, your your brush and the paint that you want to use. I'm going to mix a couple colors. I'll start with the darker orange and you just can make these strokes. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be lined up. I'm left-handed so I'm trying to uncover the screen. I'm kind of just doing some rapid broken lines and you know if you can get more than one brush that's great. I know it comes with one and you can obviously clean it up and go in between and so so then I'm just going to add some little streaks of yellow to highlight it. And, you know, as you can see, I'm not doing the, the nice defined lines. I'm just going over it. If it comes out a little lighter or darker, it doesn't matter to me. And I'm not going to mix a couple colors at the end. I kind of want it to be a vibrant color. So I'm going to stick with this green. It's kind of a bright green. It's number seven inside your uh, instruction on the back of the um, box. And I'm just gonna tip it off with that. So this is what the Impressionists did. They, they did these more rapid strokes. They show action and movement and you can highlight it with white. You can darken it with the other blue. Like let's say in between here, you wanna have a little variation in between the end of each feather, just do that. And it, it'll kind of blend in there. Also, if you don't like what you did, you can just blot it out too. It looks really pretty in the sky when you're doing white and the blue and just blot it out. But you know, you had a little definition, but you can see it's not about it coming out perfectly at all. Um, I wanted to show you a couple examples of the paintings I'm talking about. I'm just gonna move this little guy over. <clears throat> so, you know, you can see this water view. This artist just had a lot of fun laying down the color. If white went over it, it got a little lighter. You can mix it ahead on your palette. And you're all probably familiar with Claude Monet's water lilies. Let's see if they line that up okay for you. So there's no real rhyme or reason as far as the uh, he kind of, he's actually doing strokes in both directions, but believe me, these guys thought it out and they were being influenced by this new way of looking at nature that wasn't out there before. But it doesn't look tight. It doesn't look restrictive. It looks fun and express, you know, filled with expression and color and uh, seeing it the way they saw it at the moment. So I wanted to tie that in with today so you don't sit there um, getting a little bit frustrated because you can't get it right in the lines perfectly. You just add color and have fun. And it doesn't even have to be the color that they indicate. You can just go with any color you, you would really enjoy doing. Um, does anybody have any questions about that or comments? Uh, okay, well, if you don't, we're going to go and see what Heather's up to with her paint by number. Okay, so um, as you can see down here, I started with the turtle, 
but what we're going to do is just use a technique where I kind of use the numbers that, or you can use the picture of the paint by number and just go off of that. So that it's similar colors to what's on the paint by number, but instead of um, worrying so much about where the lines are at, um, you just sort of color it in general. So we're going to do this butterfly right here. So I took a pin and outlined it just so that you could see the butterfly better because I know the light blue does not show up very well. Um, so you may want to be careful though if you choose to try to line it with a pin because you may not be able to cover it up as easily with your paint. So basically I'm going to take this butterfly here and it's, it's a lot of browns in the um, white and yellow. And so I'm just going to take the brown here and I mix a little white into it. And I'm just going to paint the wing here to start out with. So I have like a background of the brown. And then after I get some of the brown down, I'm gonna go back over the top and kind of add some detail. So you don't have to fully paint it in. Once you add the detail, it'll cover up some of that. Add a little water. It wasn't spreading real well, so apparently mine was a little thick still. So I add a little more water to that. And then I'm going to rinse my brush off and get some of the reddish color here. Of course, it was the one I hadn't opened yet. And we can add some red. And you can kind of blend it in there with the, uh, the brown a little bit. If your brown is dried up, just get a little more brown and kind of paint the edges so that it's not so defined. And of course, this won't look quite like the original if you do it by the numbers but if you feel like it's too small of an area or too detailed that it's more than you know you feel like taking on um, you can always start with this type of technique and then if you end up really liking the paint by numbers then you can always try to do a more detailed job the next time um, or you can always add more detail later depending on how artsy you are um, so this is the basic idea of how you would do that kind of technique. And um, this is a sample that, whoops, that a veteran did. And you can see how she didn't necessarily follow the mixing patterns of all the numbers on the parrot, but you can tell they're parrots and they're pretty and they're bright and they're colorful. So, this is just, once again, if you have the limited fine motor coordination and things like that, and staying in those lines is very difficult. A technique like this might be a little easier, but you can see the outcome still looks nice and you can feel accomplished and, you know, add your own creativity to it as well. Um, and I know with uh, the parrot, uh, this particular veteran, she was having a little trouble with the black, so she actually used a permanent marker to fill in the beak a little bit there. Um, so you can always add other types of mediums into this if it helps, you know, bring out the color or the detail that you couldn't do with the brush. But of course, once again, painting is like everything else. The more you do it, the more you practice, the better you get. And I personally find that sometimes I'm in the mood to paint and things come out great. And sometimes I'm not such in a mood and I try to paint anyways, and it just doesn't come out looking good. So, you know, you got to weigh your own abilities and, and personality with the stuff like that. When it comes to arts and crafts, it's, you know, all about how you feel when you're doing it and how good it comes out. It's sort of like cooking with love. Yeah, I okay, like that. So, <laughs> so, so that would be my demonstration, um, Mia. So I don't know if you have anything else to add. Um, um, I just was glad you brought up. Yeah. Um, the point you brought up was important, how you can go back, especially, or let's say you can't even start it, painting is too much, the mixing, you can use magic markers, 
you can use um, even pieces of paper to glue down in the larger areas, tissue paper. You can even go over it with, you know, a fine tip black marker just to bring out the detail like she mentioned. We don't have to just use the tools that were sent to you. So thank you for mentioning that. Um, anybody else? Where are we going? Okay. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is modernism. We all kind of know sort of what it is. Um, all those abstract paintings you see out there, splatter paint, um, collage, uh, you know, um, refurbished items that are found and just glued on. Modernism, um, it started in the early decades of the 20th century. Basically, um, artists were reacting to the changing world in, um, around them. They wanted it, art not to just be the classical, you know, way they were taught in, in a, a classical art training where it's representational, you recognize everything. They kind of wanted to tie it in with this new industrial revolution going on. So that meant uh, using new materials, uh, new ways of putting materials down, um, different techniques, different imagery. Um, so it ran the gamut from um, like the cubist, breaking up the, the picture plane. This is actually, I think, a wine bottle and fish um, in the post-impressionist era, just using um, all these different bold shapes to express, this is Matisse, just what they were thinking and feeling. It, and it isn't about, you know, oh, let's make this a flesh tone person of, you know, it's, it's about what they felt. Um, here's some other ideas in this book. So you, you've got this nice head going on here by Leger, I think it is, a French person. They just did some bold block. This is uh, actually a print. Um, but as you can see, there's just swipes of color. There's just so much out there. And I thought that would be fun to apply to our parrot, um, like this, this piece. I'm going to have to raise it up. So there's another, whoops, portrait with, you know, it's just the blocks of paint. And it's not very realistic. It's, it's kind of bold and exciting. And so that's what I was trying to explain to you what we're going to try to do here. Now you could have one of the other images. This I switched over to the two parrots. So I tried to figure out, okay, how can I break this picture down and make it, you know, a little different, a little bolder. You know, I just took a thick black marker and divide it up into shapes like that. You can swirl it, you can make straight lines. It can look like a puzzle. You can make the whole wing look like a wing. Just do whatever you want. Actually, the marker will tell you where it wants to go because there is no right way. You know it's a bird, you see it. You don't even have to make it look like the bird. I sort of did just for uh, the demonstration. So um, another way to do it, taping off. A lot of artists did this. They take, go ahead, take a little piece of tape, and let's say they want to overlap the colors. They dip it in a little bit of paint here. Let's start with this maybe medium blue, you know, and just swipe the color, you know, and lift up the paint. And then you can crisscross with another color. Let's take a bolder color like a green. And it's really fun because you, you don't even really have to have a plan when you tape up. You can just see where all the lines and how they, they kind of meld together. And what I do sometimes is after I've taped a few areas, I, I don't even put it on too heavy. I see what I like. And if I, sometimes if I don't like it, I just blot it off with a paper towel. And then you can have um, maybe some light background and just you have it like that, and then you just take your brush and go back in in areas you want to and kind of make them big and special and fill them in how you want. You kind of see it's a bird, but it is, it just kind of takes on a life of its own. It's really fun. You don't have to worry about it. And like Heather mentioned, go in with a big, thick marker. I've shown you on the last, I think, uh, 
when Heather and I did the puzzle kit, this puffy paint, I got it at Walmart for a buck. It's really a lot of fun. You shake it. And let's say you want to add a little bold color. And what you do is let's say we'll put it right here so it'll show up. I hope this is showing up for you all. Are you seeing this application? Yes. Oh, oh okay. I because it's kind of hard for my smaller screen here. I'm trying to find it. And what these do, the puffy paint is dimensional. Now I'm, I try not to swipe your hand right through it again, but it's really a lot of fun and you can just do pattern after pattern. If you don't want those actual bubbles, you can take one of the handy dandy toothpicks we talked about and just, you know, spread it and maybe make a tail and curve the ends like that. It's super easy to use. It just takes a while to dry in this humidity in the summer like that. And so I divided up the feathers. Um, this is really open ended, it could turn out any way. So I, I encourage you to have some fun with that. I think I had a little more fun with it going this way. But each of like Heather mentioned, each of us are a little bit different. And we enjoy different things. And uh, for me, it was it was this this one right here. And uh, I don't know, Heather, if you have something else you want to show us now. Um, uh, uh, no, I, I, I think we covered um, all the things I, I could think of at the time. Okay. Um, I, I think we uh, did too. I did want to mention one other thing I forgot to show you as far as things to fill in. These are just little glitter sticks. I forgot to show you how you can bling out everything. You can buy these um, very easily. And I used this last um, demo with the puzzle. These just stick on, these are uh, little crystals and you can get them for a buck in every color. I got mine at the dollar store. So let's say you wanna put it in the parrot's eye or you wanna make the clouds sparkle. You can put those up there. Um, I think I, showed you everything that I had. Um, we had a really good time and hope that your paint by number is a real nice expression of what you like and, and who you are and just have fun and know that there is no right way. It'll they'll all come out differently. I've done these workshops before and uh, we all stood up with our paintings together and took a, a picture and they were all different. So it, it, you'll see, I think you'll have a lot of fun. Thanks for being here today. I have you. I just want to add one thing. This is Rose. Um, please remember, or I'm reminding you that the next virtual workshop is on August 25th, and that's the 9 11 Memorial Candle, which, if you haven't gotten it already, you should be getting it soon in the mail. So please sign up for that one and join us for the next one. Thanks, Rose. And everybody have a great day. Thanks, Heather. Thank you everyone Thank for you. joining. Bye. Bye. -bye.